Let's talk though now uh, to Kevin Hollenrake, Shadow Business Secretary uh, and Conservative MP for Thirsk and Moulton. Kevin, a very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. Thanks very much indeed for joining us. Um, they haven't got off to a great start, this Labour government. We've got a live camera, and, and if, you, if, you, if you don't mind, we'll probably be cutting away from time to time uh, to HMP Brixton, where uh, they're releasing um, as many as 1,750 prisoners, not just from Brixton, from all over the country. Nobody seems to really know who any of these people are. Um, it seems a bit of a dangerous policy, doesn't it? Well, I agree. I mean, you've got to manage the prison population. That's fair enough. But... Uh, I think Shivana Mahmood, who's the Justice Secretary, at one point said there'd be no people released who were guilty of domestic abuse, of, of course. And um, But that doesn't appear to be the case. People being released back onto the streets who have been guilty of those kind of crimes. And you cannot put society at risk. You've got to manage this in a careful way. So, uh, so it seems to be a very blanket policy that could create uh, great difficulties for many people... Yeah in our society. I mean, a lot of people are calling in today to me and saying, well, why don't we just build more prisons? I mean, you guys were in for 14 years. Why didn't you build any prisons? Yeah, we had a £4 billion prison programme. There was 20,000 more spaces. Uh, you could have said we should do that earlier. And I accept that we should have done. But, you know, we did take a stricter line in terms of sentencing, which caused some of these problems. So uh, I agree with you. We, you know, for some people, prison is the wrong thing. For a lot of people, it's the only thing. And you've got to get people who are dangerous to society locked up, right. and I fully support that. And what is the logic of letting people out um, in terms of who they let back in in their place? Because it's not that clear whether in the end. It's not as if there's... I mean, I know there's a huge backlog in the justice system anyway, but, but who exactly are going to be filling these, say, 1,750 places? Are they all waiting somewhere else to be put into a prison? Well, these are choices the government's making, and the government's got to make the right choices in terms of... Yeah, I can see the logic in letting less serious criminals out of jail if they're nearly the end of their sentence and uh, putting more dangerous criminals in jail and people who are responsible for those very violent protests, I think they should go to jail, of course. But that's the choices the government's making. Is it making the right choices is a fair question and probably one for the a safer Keir Starmer or the Justice Secretary. Yeah. But and, and they've it's... made wrong choices in other areas, not least the winter fuel allowance, of course. Well, yeah, we'll come on to that in a second. But it does seem to me that many of the people who will be released today or who could be released today are quite violent criminals, you know, including people uh, who have been found guilty of domestic violence, people who have, um, you know, been brutal uh, with their partners or their ex-partners you know and obviously the partners uh, in in in, in uh, uh, waiting waiting to see whether their their assailant comes out are very worried about it yeah it's totally wrong and it completely contradicts the position the justice secretary of this government took they were very clear i thought saw on television that, that that would not be the case and now it appears those guilty of domestic abuse which can be a danger to their partners their previous partners are let back on the streets. It's absolutely wrong. We were very clear in the choices we were making that wouldn't include violent offenders. But that does not appear to be the case with this government. No, it doesn't. Let's talk about the winter fuel allowance. There's a vote today uh, in Parliament. Um, not much chance, I don't think, of it being voted down in the Commons. However, um, Baroness... Um, um, I've forgotten her name. I um, can't remember her name now. Baroness... Altman. Altman. Altman, that's right. Um, Baroness Altman's got a plan in the House of Lords which could possibly derail it. Um, do you think there's much chance of that happening? Well, I hope so. It's completely wrong. And, I mean, and against all the promises that Keir Starmer made prior to being government. I mean, it's so easy to stand on the sidelines and criticise, and that's all we heard for Keir Starmer. Once we're in government, of course, they do the complete opposite. And to think you're going to pay train drivers these huge pay increase, these £10,000 pay increase, and nurses and doctors, and I'm not against paying public sector workers more, but paying them without any condition which could have improved productivity, which could have paid for those pay rises, and could have left the benefits in place for our pensioners. Yeah. It's absolutely wrong. You're taking this... I mean, nobody minds taking winter fuel allowance off millionaire pensioners, but you're talking about some pensioners that are on as little as £13,000 a year will not get this benefit. It's absolutely outrageous and a huge political mistake and they will end up reversing it. Yeah, do you think so? Because, I mean, I don't think they realise quite how big the opposition to this would be. Um, you know, Rachel Reeves is busy t writing for The Telegraph today trying to make out that pensioners will actually be better off because they'll get more money because of the triple lock, which is frankly nothing to do with them. But, you know, That's I'm right. not sure anybody buys her mathematics at the moment. Well, not at all. They'd have got that anyway. Mm. You're still taking the £300 of people. That's the point. It's absolutely wrong. It, it's the governors to choose, Mike, as you know, mm. and they've made the absolutely the wrong choice here. All they've done is gone back to the union paymasters who've been funding them for the last 14 years and given everything they wanted without any negotiation. 
I mean, even Blair and Brown would not have done that. I'm absolutely certain they'd have negotiated something that could have given the unions some kind of payoff without taking this very important benefit away from pensioners. It's absolutely a cynical approach, and I would say cowardly as well, because they're trying to pin the blame on us, mm. which is completely contrived, confected arguments, absolutely not wrong. It's absolutely wrong. This is a choice made by Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves to deprive pensioners and pay train drivers. And what makes you think they're going to reverse it eventually? Because they don't show any signs of that. I mean, if anything, they're digging in. I think they're ashamed of it, and now they can't sort of get out of it, if you know what I mean. Because, I mean, Keir Starmer looks like a bloke that doesn't like admitting mistakes. And it, this is a massive mistake. Exactly. And that's why they'll end up reversing it or mitigating it somehow. Because the opposition to it will grow. It won't, it won't die away. Right. I mean, this, this no, people, I mean, I've never heard my listeners and viewers, when it was announced on that day, on the Monday, I think, by Rachel Reeves a few weeks ago, I've never seen such a reaction to anything. Absolutely. And that's why this was announced months ago, and it's still, and it's gathering momentum. It's not dying away. Mm. It's a huge political mistake, as you said, as I absolutely agree. Anyone who knows politics knows that this policy will not persist. But even if she reverses it, that's what she's toying with now, thinking about even if she reverses it, this is a stain on their government for the next five years. It's an outrageous removal of a very important benefit to our pensioners. I think there's something like 800,000 pensioners in poverty where they, where they will not get this winter fuel allowance. It's, it's absolutely horrendous. Yeah, exactly right. And it's very, very difficult for them to fill out a form which apparently requires the answering of something like 243 questions uh, to get you to actually qualify for it. And as we know, an awful lot of older people are not interested in, in begging for money. Right. They're not going to ask for money. Um, they don't want to. They, they've got too That's much right. pride for that. And so you know, there, will be, um, there will be people dying. Also, let's face it, I mean, yesterday's uh, Daily Mail had the story. In 2017, Labour's own research department came out and said, if you take away the winter fuel benefit, 4,000 people will die. Yeah, totally wrong. I mean, I, mean I, I just cannot believe how big a mistake it is. And, um, and, and I, I, just, I knew this government would be bad. This government did not win this last election. We lost it. They were never popular on the doorstep. We made a complete mess and we deserved to lose. But we knew that this government would be the most left-wing government in certainly in my adult lifetime mm. and where they are taking us in conjunction with the unions they are taking us back to the 1970s and they don't care who gets steamrolled in the process even to the extent they remove a 300 pounds annual benefit from pensioners earning £13,000 a year. It's absolutely outrageous. Yeah. Let me ask you about another story that's doing the rounds this morning. This is about HMRC. Apparently they've got uh, loads and loads of staff being sacked for bullying, for theft, for intoxication. 43% up uh, in the last four years, basically. Um, what's going on and who's running the uh, the tax people? Because it seems as though they're not working uh, very, very well. I think as much as two two days a week is about as much as you get out of many of them working actually in an office. You know, who's running the civil service these days? Well, obviously, there's the chief exec of that service. He's got responsibility for making sure HMRC is run properly. Uh, I, I don't have a problem with people going through disciplinary if they're guilty of... Uh, of practices and behaviour that's that's um, that's not consistent with good workplace place behaviour. So I don't have a problem with that. Yeah, but, but if it's... they're sacking more people than they've ever sacked before, with 43% up, I mean, there's something wrong, clearly, isn't it? Well, I, I say, I, I, you know, some, before business, before politics, I was in business for 30 years. If you've got people in your workforce that are doing things that are inappropriate against com uh, company policy or organisational policy. It's right to discipline them and to get rid of them. So, I mean, I can't speak for what's happening in HMRC, but I do think good, responsible, disciplined work workplace practices uh, are, are uh, the right thing to uh, to make sure that happen in a workplace. Yes, indeed. And talk about the Conservative Party workplace. How are things going? Because you've got a leadership campaign on ongoing, which is going to run for a few more months yet. Um, you're back at Kevin Badenoch, I understand. Yeah, I am. I mean, I think it's... Listen, we, we weren't in a good place for an election, but I think we're feeling a better place now in that, you know, Labour are making mistakes left, right and centre, um, which bounced to lift our mood. And I think we can see we're optimistic about the future. I think we've got five good candidates left who are vying for the leadership. I personally think Kemi is the best of them because I think she's different. I think she's optimistic. I think she's very strong. She's very decisive. She builds good teams and lets people, the, the good people she puts in place, get on with the job. And 
I worked for her for 18 months as minister in her department, in the Department of Business and Trade. Um, she supported me 100% of the way, including, of course, trying to make sure postmasters got redressed for the terrible, terrible treatment they received at the hands of the post office. I think she's a very good leader, and I think she'll do a good job of leading our party and hopefully leading our country. Well, we've got Mel Stride coming on today. That'll be the second time he's been on. We've had Robert Jenrick in the studio twice. She hasn't been in yet, so perhaps when you see her next, you should tell her that, uh, you know, if she wants to win, she needs to come in here. I'm very happy to tell her that. I'm, <laughs> she's not never afraid of the media, Mike, and I'm sure she'll uh, she'll engage with you in good, in good uh, in due course. Excellent. Kevin, good to talk to you. Thanks very much indeed. Thank Kevin Hollingrake there, Shadow Business Secretary and Conservative MP for Thursk and Moulton.